Welcome to the testing world. In this session, we are going to understand types of web services. We have two types of web services. One is SOAP services and other is REST services. So we are going to understand detail of these two services in this session. First, we will understand what is SOAP service. So SOAP stands for Simple Object Access Protocol. SOAP is itself a protocol which is going to use HTTP protocol to transfer the data between my machine and to the web server. Means whatever the request we are sending from my machine to the server and whatever the result we are receiving from the server to my machine the data exchange will take place by using HTTP protocol. SOAP is a wrapper over the HTTP protocol. So in case of the SOAP services, we are going to use two protocols. One is SOAP and other one is HTTP. In SOAP services, message exchange between the service and the application means request and response exchange between my machine and the server. It will take place in the format of XML. So whatever the input we are going to send will be in the form of XML and whatever the output we are going to get from the server that will again in the form of XML. It's a standard way to develop the web service. It's an old way to develop web services. So it's a standard, conventional and heavy. Heavy means because we are sending a lot of data to the server and in XML we have to pass the tags as well. Hope you know what is tag. In SOAP, we have to pass data as well as tag. For each data, we have two tags as well, starting tag and end tag. I'll show you what do you mean by the tag. So we have a starting tag and end tag. That's because we are sending a lot of data to the server and again, we are getting response from the server in the form of XML. So a lot of tags are coming to my machine from the server. So it's a heavy input as well as output. In SOAP services, we are going to use WSDL. It's a web service definition language file. We are going to understand this WSDL in the next slide. So to work on SOAP services, we need WSDL. We need to understand what do you mean by the WSDL, WSDL. So WSDL, WSDL stands for Web Service Description Language. It's a base file which is used to describe web service and how to access that. So it will be a file in which everything will be mentioned about the SOAP service, like what all the functionalities are provided by this web service, how we can access that web service, what kind of response we are going to get from the web service, what kind of input or we can send a request we can send to the web service. So everything about the web service will be mentioned in this WSDL file. It is again a XML file, so uh, this WSDL file again developed in the XML format. So to start testing on SOAP web services, the first requirement which we are having is this WSDL file. So we have to understand WSDL architecture. So in WSDL, we have mainly four elements. One is types, which describe all the data types which used in the web service. So again, like any other programming language, in services as well, what are the different inputs we are going to get should have any specific data type. So all the data types which will be received, which will be received in the input, or what all the data type which we are going to send in output, these data types will be mentioned in this type section. Messages. We can understand it like, I'm going to receive a zip code. So zip code is a message. I'm going to return address line one, address line two, address line three. So these address line one, two and three are the messages. Means if I compare this with any programming language, so whatever the name of the variable we are giving, these are messages over here. Port type is the different operations which are supported by the web service. So different operations means my web service support, uh, it can validate address, that is one operation. It can clean address, that is second operation. Or if you talk about the weather information, so it will give today's weather information, that is one service. It can 
forecast tomorrow's weather it could be a second uh, operation so what all the operations is performed by the web service will be mentioned in this port type and binding is the communication protocol which is used in the web service so that will be mentioned in the binding that's my visual file I'm going to show you how does it look like so that is one of the visual file and here you can see we have four section one is the type here we can see the type and then we have a lot of messages so you can check like one message name is get weather soap in other message name is get weather soap out so what all the messages are used are mentioned over here if we go to the bottom so we have seen like in Bristol we have the type we have messages then we have operations so here you can check these are the operations like first operation is get weather other operation is get cities by country so what all the different operations will be performed by this web service is mentioned over here so that's my visual file and this is the file which we are going to use while testing soap services next type of service is rest service rest is the other way to develop web services rest uses http or maybe other protocol which can perform the operations like get post put and delete so in case of the rest services we can use get means we are picking some data we are getting some data from the server post means we are posting some data to the server posting new data to the server put means we are updating some data to the server and delete we are deleting some data from the server so it's a new way to develop web services it's a lightweight because it support few formats which are very lightweight format like it support plain text it support json so it's a lightweight format it uses wadl like in soap services we have wsdl in rest services we have wadl it is web application definition language rest itself is not a protocol it's just a way it describes like how my client should interact with the server rest stand for representation state transfer each of the functionalities which we can access by using rest services we call it a resource so I'm taking example of any text calculation web service which is providing different functionalities like it can calculate income tax it, it can calculate sale tax service tax all these functionalities we call it a resource in rest services so each functionality can be accessed by the URI the advantage of the rest service is that rather than accessing the complete application we can access only one functionality of the application and each and every functionality can be accessed by the unique URI in case of the soap services we are getting visual means we are accessing complete application but in case of the rest services if you want to access complete application we can go to the WADL we can use WADL but if you want to access only particular functionality only one functionality we can use URI one more very important feature of the rest services is that it support lot of formats means it support HTML XML plain text JSON PDF HTML and many other formats so means we can send requests in these formats we can receive the data from the server we can receive response again in these formats so advantage is that it is supporting many formats for the request and response these are the few URIs which I'm going to show you again I'll explain what is URI so one application can have hundred functionalities so if you want to access all the functionalities we need WADL WADL will bring all the functionalities we can test it we can use it but if you want to test if you want to use only particular functionality in case of the rest services we can access that functionality by using its URI so these are the two URI of of rest services one URI is for getting all customer data and other URI is to getting any customer data which is having the number which is having ID 3 so I'll show you that is the URI that is a URI of one resource one functionality which is provided by rest service 
I'm just passing the customer ID it is giving the specific customer data but we can access one more URI it will bring all customer data so each functionality in REST service is called resource each resource can be accessed by using URI so that's all we have for type of web services thanks for watching this video